everyone, and welcome to End to End, the podcast where we talk about all things funny and a few things not. I'm your host, Duhan. Join me, as always, are my wonderful co-host, Lightning Rabbit. Hello. And Firebolt. Hey there. And joining us in the studio for a very special guest interview is... I am sorry, I completely forgot how to uh, pronounce your last name. Oh, Metzger. Kelly Metzger, who is the yes. voice of Spitfire on My Little Pony Friendship and Magic, as well as being a very talented all-round voice actress. Welcome Thank to the you. show, Kelly. Thank you. Yeah, don't be afraid of the T-Z-G altogether. It's a good. Just embrace it. Three consonants. All right, I'll try my best. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, as those of you who are, you know, like those three of you who watch the show but have no idea what, uh, you know, character Miss Metzger plays, uh, Spitfire is a member, is the uh, member of the, blah, sorry, my brain has stopped working apparently. I think you're thinking of the Wonderbolts. Yeah. Yes, that's what I was trying to think of, is the, the one. member of the Wonderbolts. On... I'm not a member of the Wonderbolts, I'm the leader of the Wonderbolts. Leader of the Wonderbolts. I'm Wonderbolt. sorry, yes. The captain of the Wonderbolts. The captain. The captain. The supreme the chancellor right. of the Wonderbolts. Yes. Uh, the organization that Rainbow Dash wishes to join. So, pretty important character. I think you've had uh, at least one appearance in all three seasons of the show at this point. Yeah, so important. Yeah. There should be a spin-off, like Fraser. I, but, <laughs> that might be fun. <laughs> But just all Wonderbolt all the time, and all about Spitfire's adventures and dramas in her life. So, what would be the premise of this show? It's just like the, the adventures of the Wonderbolt, the Wonderbolt's open a bar, like sports bar, and uh... yeah, yeah. The the uh, it'd be like it would be like Friends, but it'd be the Wonderbolts, hmm. and uh, you know, Spitfire looking for love, you know, questioning her job, questioning her life choices. Sounds maybe deep. maybe maybe Spitfire turns turn what's old for a pony? I don't know. Um, what's how how long do ponies live? I have no idea. Honestly, there's just a little bit weird on that one. Wikipedia. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe Spitfire turns thirty and has a crisis. Like maybe she shouldn't have been a Wonderbolt. Maybe she always wanted to be a doctor. Things like um, that. That would be weirdly. This I is just blowing my mind right now. Like the, the concept for this show is so. Someone needs to make this. We, we need this show. Yeah, definitely. The world needs. I should have been a doctor, Spitfire. Yeah, yes. <laughs> now, obviously, you didn't start out your career by uh, voicing a magical talking pony. So, uh, how did you get into voice acting? Um, how did I get in? Uh, well, I did a lot of theater. Um, and when I got out of acting school, I did children's theater. Played a lot of kids, even though I was adult. And um. Oh, did I get into it? I just, uh, uh, I thought it would be fun. I, th I thought it I took some voiceover lessons, um, coachings with Kathy Wesselup, was my first voiceover teacher. Um, oh. She plays Spike. And um, made a demo and auditioned, and finally they let me play. Really? Um, yeah. So how was that, you know, be, your first mentor being now someone that you work with? Oh, I love it! Every time I, I work with Kathy, I'm I'm really excited. I feel like I've uh, like I've made it. Yeah, very excited to be able. It's like I feel like I'm playing in the big leagues. And before I was, you know, being like, let me play, guys, let me play. I'm feeling I'm sure a lot of people who've uh, you know started working at a job they aspired to uh, do for a very long time, you know, can relate to. Mm hmm. Uh, was uh, actually now that you mention it, it does actually sort of sound like you really kind of you know took over your first big role being in the show. Uh, did, did you do any other shows before this point? Before uh, aside from the children's theater? Um, what was, my my first cartoon was um a British season uh, a a British show on the British Disney Channel called Famous Five, and oh, yeah. uh, I had a character on the first season, but I think I got replaced by uh, a voice actress in L.A. Why am I talking about this on a podcast? I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> but by Kathy Suchi or Suki, I think her name is. She she plays Phil and Lil on Rugrats. So if, if someone's going to replace you, I guess it's good that somebody awesome replaces you. But yeah. it's my first gig. Um, my first, um, it's called Prelay, where they record our voices first and then draw afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, 
that was my first prelay gig, and I did some anime as well, some dubbing, and yeah. How, uh, how is dubbing compared to uh, doing original uh, dialogue? I mean, in both ways, you're working from the script, but is there a difference? You find um, you able to watch. Yeah, it, it, in dubbing, it seems like the most important thing is making your your words match up with the the mouth flaps of the characters, and mm. so you that seems like that's even more important than the acting sometimes. <laughs> so it, it's nice to have the freedom in the prelay where you record your voice before they draw it to. Um, Add sound effects and emotions and the own rhythm of what you think the character should sound like. Yeah. I can definitely see that being a bit liberating. Pardon? I can see that as being a fair bit liberating after uh, you know, working with mouth flaps and so on. Yes. So, uh, the, uh, excuse me. Is this the first show you started doing with pre uh, sorry, No, obviously it's not because you just mentioned the show you did uh, pre before. Uh, yes. Yeah. But uh, how long have you been doing uh, pre shows uh before doing this one um i think i got into doing voiceovers in around 2007 2008 hmm. so i i did i did a, I had a small character on a previous uh generation of my little pony i played uh story bell who i think was only on one little my little pony movie but that was a previous generation oh there you so. go yeah. Well, the uh, the alumni, the uh, mm -hmm. thing from the original shows. Yes. I want to say that you were into this all before it was cool. Um, I was into this what? Sorry, the connection on my end. For oh, you. no, that's completely okay. fine. I was just saying you could uh, legitimately say that you were into My Little Pony before it was cool. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I've, uh, I played with My Little Pony when I was a little kid. So that's what makes it. That's what makes it cool for me is that I can be like, I became a pony. <laughs> I can, yeah. I can only imagine how exciting that must be to kind of go from doing something you were doing as a little kid and suddenly going, my God, I'm doing this. I am actually, I'm actually yeah. shooting this. Yeah, super fun. I can only imagine. How did the? Uh, how were you picked to uh, play the character of Spitfire on the on the show? How did I get to play it? Yeah, I mean, obviously, auditioning and all that. How did that. I get the job? Um, I auditioned for the main six, and unfortunately for me, I but maybe fortunately for you guys, I, I didn't get one of those larger parts. And then um, I think because uh, the community of voice actors in Vancouver is, is quite small, and once you start working, people know your work and know they can trust you. And I think they just called me and said they had a, apart for me and in the first season I only had three lines so it wasn't that much of a challenge but I thought it was funny that I got a part where my character has red hair and I have red reddish hair so it's like <laughs> do I only get parts because of the color of my hair even though you don't even see me in the show I don't know I like is that why I got this I'm not sure but, yeah. so now uh, when it when it comes to lines from the actual show um Correct me if I'm wrong. For the the very first appearance of Spitfire in Sonic Rainboom, that was um, Nicole Oliver that did those lines, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes when there's an incidental character, they'll just get who's ever in the room. If there's only one sentence, to be like, oh, okay, can what do you, what would you do for this character? Can you play this? And so that's how it goes. So maybe once they decided to flush out the character more. Um, they gave it to me, luckily for me. So I'm sure Nicole Oliver could have continued to do a good job too. She's a really great actress. I can imagine, but I think we lucked out uh, rather well when you uh, when you got the part instead. I think I lucked out too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so you now in season three, um, obviously it, it, it took it a little bit of a turn and, and spit for um, when she was in the show before, always had a very uh, calm and collected and cool uh, tone, mm -hmm. and that was shifted. And that was shifted over to more of a drill sergeant tone when uh, when Wonder Wolf Academy came on. Um, yeah. What was the difference? Uh, in, you know, how was it different? You know, portraying the character with different tones. Um, I guess it's something that uh, I kind of 
figured out in the room when I went in to record. I got the script a couple days ahead and I was like, oh yeah, I actually get lines and something to do. So I worked out what I thought I wanted to do, but um, you know, the circumstances before, she was always in a very low stress, like laid back situation. And now she was in a position of authority um, as a drill sergeant. So that did something different to my voice and the way I placed it, placed it and the way where they wanted me to place it. Um, you know, uh, I've, I've lost track of what the question is. Sorry, what? Uh, the difference between the character's voice from their original appearance to uh, the season three appearance. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What else do you want to know? Well, <laughs> did I answer it? Yeah, no, no, yeah. I think you uh, you answered it quite well. I, I, I do have to ask, though, um, when they were telling you uh, they wanted the character's voice to take on more of a drill sergeant uh, type voice, did, did they phrase it as uh, sort of, well, you know, do what you'd imagine a drill sergeant would be like, or did they say, here's Full Metal Jacket, watch this and just, you know, <laughs> do whatever you want, but you know, just watch the movie. They, they, they said, uh, do it like a drill sergeant, do the rhythm of a drill sergeant. And I was like, oh, what's that? And then they were like, it's like this. Da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. You think this? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I'm really yeah. just imagining <laughs> the, uh, you know, the uh, people in the sound room just going, Okay, so we want you to do this exactly like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess they act. Maybe they actually use my lines. So in my in my memory, it's just more like blah blah blah. Um, I, I yeah. Prefer, uh, I prefer that version of it, where everyone in the sound studio was just completely insane. Everyone in the oh, everyone like in the in the studio when the recording is insane. Yeah, it's just uh, like all the people trying to give you advice on your lines are just gibbering. <laughs> Uh, are, are, uh, no, no, like are, are the directors and engineers insane? Oh, no, 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 I'm, I, I know they're not. I'm just saying that. Oh, they kind of are. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh oh, what's the question again? <laughs> there wasn't a question. It was just, oh. uh, silly you're just, you're just imagining everybody in, insane. Everybody is kind of insane in there, especially in, um, the recording studio. It, it's a bunch of like weirdo, crazy pe people where I don't know sometimes what job they would do if they couldn't do this job because they're really talented in a weird way and they're kind of like badly behaved children and they get paid to be badly behaved children as long as they're funny and can do the work really quickly. But as soon as, sometimes you get on a show, especially if there's a lot of guys in it and as soon as there's a moment where we're not actually rolling, it's it's pandemonium and chaos and complete immaturity. And I'm always shocked that any of us continue to get hired because we are so immature all the time. But maybe that leads to um, more ideas and more jokes. And you got to be silly, I suppose, in this job. Yeah, the more immature people tend to get higher up in ranks just because they're creative for some reason. It's really yeah. weird. Maybe that's it. Maybe that goes together, creativity and immaturity and a childlike playfulness and all that. Yeah, child mindset. Also, hello. Hello. <laughs> this is uh, AR, everyone, coming in 10 minutes late again. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I was at work and I forgot I had a gas in my car, <laughs> so I had to go put that in on my way home from work. Yeah, that's fine. Like yeah. I think Duha's trying to say something, but I cannot understand him. Yeah, his Duha, internet's a bit you hear me? kind of iffy today. Oh, really? We just need to keep uh, keep the interview going. Let's keep so it let's just ignore Duha, everybody. Let's not Make let it fall apart 17 minutes in. Okay. <laughs> maybe, it, maybe it's my fault because I said pandem people who are chaotic yeah, and, turn and into pandemonium. pandemonium. Yes, Duha is the epitome of chaos and pandemonium. Yes. Yeah. Don't worry, it's, it's very often like pandemonium, especially with AR here. He tends to bring the pandemonium with him. Well, ah. I'm sorry, I think more faster than most people. More faster, okay. Yes, that was intentional. <laughs> I'm sure it was. Anyway, um, Duhad, since I don't have a list of anything to ask, I'll let you carry on. I was just going to ask, uh, you know, since we're talking about the recording uh, side of things, 
who who do you record with? What other voice actors or voice actresses do you uh, generally work with uh, in the Vancouver studio? Um, who do I work with? Um, I guess there's like a, a core group that I keep seeing over and over again. Um, Tabitha St. Germain, uh, Kathy Wesseluck, Ashley Ball, uh, Andrea, um, Peter New, Trevor Duvall, uh, Sam Vincent is in every show. Um, <laughs> so is Tabitha. Um, Marika Hendricks. Uh, yeah, lots of, everybody's awesome. Everybody's great to work with. Do you uh, get brought in on shows where you're not playing the fire to provide uh, secondary lines, or do they only bring you in when uh, they actually need your the fire voice? Um, like on, on My Little Pony or in, on other line, uh, other shows? Uh, well, I'd, I'd imagine that they'd bring you on for voices other than Spitfire on other shows. But... <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I... Uh... I'm, I have to be careful how I answered this question because I signed you know, oh, yeah, yeah. Closer yeah. Agreement. but um, I, I, I maybe as a, as a voice actress my, my I've been told my voice print is very specific and even when I try and do different characters you can always kind of tell it's me oh so, I get you so usually I, I get about I get one character on a show. Maybe I get two. Um, some people have a voice that is maybe more flexible than mine, or maybe I have to work on my range more. Probably both those things. Um, right now on My Little Pony, yeah, I'm just I'm just Spitfire, and that's all I can say for now. But no, that's fine. I understand. Yeah. Uh, no, nothing can be said about uh, any upcoming you know unaired episodes until yeah. And I, I get what you're saying with the voice thing too, because a lot of people I do voice acting, no voice actors, not professional, yeah. of course, because I'm not professional. But not um, <laughs> uh, but you, they have a specific tone in their voice. For if they change their voice ever so slightly in any way and try to do another voice, you can still tell it's them because they have that like I don't know what it is, but I know what you're talking about. Where you can tell it's still them. It's the same person yeah. doing the voice. Yeah, I think it's However called different. voice print. It, their voice. I, yeah, like, that is yeah, that is right. That. I forget yeah. terms of awesomeness, but you remember so. That, that's always good. Are you working on a lot of other work right now uh, while you're working on uh, Metal Time? Because I know that, especially you know, through the first three seasons, obviously we don't know anything about what's coming out. But within the first three seasons, you have a relatively small number of episodes that you actually uh, are in. So I'm yeah. thinking you probably do a lot of other work uh, in addition to that. Um, my main show right now is uh, it's called Ninjago. And it, it's on the car. Oh, I've heard of that. I think I've seen a couple episodes of it. And and I play Nia, the little sister. All the boys, they it's more, it's more of a guy, um, a male centric show, and that there's mm -hmm. more male characters than women. Um, but uh, I'm like I'm the little sister that often gets left behind as they go on adventures, and but I get to build robots and try and boss the boys around. So that's, that's my main show. And then I also have. Um, a project that I have a, a, a little small part on uh, the another Lego project, um, the Star Wars, the, the Yoda Chronicle. Oh, that's that. The upcoming um, little mini series that they're doing. I have a small part on that too, so that's very exciting. Ooh, the writing fancy. is excellent on that. You hear that, end -end fans? Get excited! We have uh, you know a uh, upcoming Yoda show, and there's going to be a small part from Spitfire on there. Yes. And yes. I don't even, I don't even, I'm not even mean. I, I'm not even mean. I don't even yell at anybody. <laughs> okay, this Yelling is going to be so much fun. Yeah, that's yeah. my head a little bit, not hearing you, you know, shouting at anyone. But. Yeah. <laughs> just see the entire interview shouting at us. No. Okay. We, no, we well, no, I was being sarcastic, but you can't <laughs> if you want. It's really your choice. <laughs> Ready? I mean, heck, we could all shout, and actually, that'd be pretty interesting. And peek the microphone. So what's your yeah. favorite color? <laughs> green! Good! Hey, I like green! Green's a great color. My cup is green. green that I was drinking out of. What? Not entirely what? sure why that's related, but I threw it in there because we're all going mad. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's clearly relevant. Of course. It is. You know, said you, uh, you were in an audition for uh, one of the main six roles, uh, one of the, the main six characters. Uh, mm -hmm. 
you, did you uh, voice anyone uh, in particular, or you know, was there one you were really hoping to get? Uh, oh, I really wanted to get Applejack. I was called back for Applejack and Spike. Really? Those mm -hmm. are the two characters that um that I wanted that I had callbacks for. So. Um, Ashley does a fantastic job at, as Applejack, but whenever I go in the studio, I'm like, oh, oh, I wanted Applejack so bad. <laughs> it must been kind of, uh, kind of odd to uh, see your mentor actually take one of the roles that uh, you've been called back for. Uh, well, you know, Kathy is really good at little boys' voices. Um, I've been on another show where she was the main little boy. It was called Roy's Dream Team or Dream Kicks. Or something like that, and uh, she was the little, the main little boy voice in that too. So I know she's good. She's pretty good. She's pretty cool. good. You, you know, you really, you know, you learned a lot when they actually are, you know, seriously considering you along with your mentor for the same role. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a good feeling. Mm hmm. So now the whole thing with the fan base now and uh, the way that it taken its turn um how did you find out about bronies for the first time uh i think i found out about bronies uh just at, like in the audition room listening to that that andrea was going uh to conventions and things and like that there was a whole brony following and i think i we'd heard about that hasbro had shut down a, a, a brony site or something like that because they were using uh, material. I'm not sure what site it was because it was just at the beginning and I wasn't uh, too, uh, I didn't know too much about it, but I'd heard that Hasbro had shut down a site and, and that's when I first heard about it and then I saw Andrea and I was like, what is this? What's going on? You're going to England because to talk to people who like My Little Pony? Like what? Um, yeah, so that's when I first heard about it. And then I kind of forgot about it in, until my uh, Wonder Bolts Academy uh, episode came out, and then I looked at, and saw that I had gained like a whole bunch of Twitter followers in one day. I was like, "What? What just happened? <laughs> Who are these? What? I don't know what's going on." And I'm like, "Oh, What's they the found me!" me. <laughs> Congratulations! You have now officially, you know, basically by accident. Assembled a sizable fan base of uh, people who love the uh, the three episode characters that you created. <laughs> yes, yes, it's, it's it's pretty funny. I like it though. Ben shakes the cat. Pardon? What did you just say? Uh, it's nothing. It's nothing bad. It's uh, a good thing. Good thing. Oh, yeah. uh, people who really like your work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the internet. It's a wonderful and scary place. Yeah. Mostly yes. scary. Mostly There's scary. There's so left turns. Well, it wouldn't be as scary if some people weren't so darn creepy. Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can in... name a few. Don't no, stare don't at me. Don't name them. Right now, but, uh, imagine, listeners, that I am looking right at you. I know whatever you've been doing. <laughs> you should yeah, probably working. be ashamed. I would, you should probably be ashamed. I would suggest to have not kind of incriminating the audience or <laughs> do, you, do you know how many how many times we incriminate our own audience it's not we tend to lose watchers when you do that <laughs> well yeah it's very true it's all my fault i well i mean at least we don't have any french followers because otherwise oh, we lose them all. please stop insulting that might be the reason oh they're nice people Family. okay I, I get so. angry emails from my friends relatives every time you make fun of them <laughs> I'm not going to comment friend? on your French relatives because we know. We Don't know. even start asking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be good. Yeah, so back to ponies. So now, Kelly, you uh, recently went to uh, Fiesta Equestria, a brony yes. convention down in Houston, Texas. Um, yeah. That was your first convention, if I'm not mistaken, right? It was my first convention. And how was that? Was it? Was did you have a good time there? I had a pretty good time. Uh, I was kind of thinking of, of it as a holiday when I first went, and um, uh, was very excited. And maybe uh, I celebrated a little bit too much with the other voice actors, and uh. then uh, danced a bit like no one was watching 
at the Haitian concert at Fiesta Equestria and then was informed that I had been dancing right in the view of the live stream oh, God. and and uh, came back to my hotel room after and saw that everything that I'd been doing for the past two hours had someone commented upon and I'm like, oh, they're watching. Uh, they're watching. I shouldn't. I, I. I'm. I'm not at my friend's wedding. I can't. I can't celebrate like I'm at my friend's wedding. <laughs> so yeah, we, that's the lesson I learned. That that, uh, <laughs> that no, no matter my, no matter how much Trevor Duval drinks, um, don't try and keep <laughs> up. Oh, I'm that. Okay, I'm taking I'm taking a series of notes here for, uh, you know, our eventual our inevitable rise to fame. <laughs> yeah. Inevitable rise. Uh, clearly, we're, we're yeah. Serious. That'll happen. Yeah. I'm sure. Because we have a Brit with us. How lightning? That's that's clearly why. Yes. I don't know how that works, but okay. Because people like British accents. Apparently, yeah. I have seen a lot of evidence of that. Mm. If you're Except a the fan, British. say in the comments below. <laughs> you have you have a lot of fans of your of your accent. Apparently, when I first got on Skype, everyone okay. I met seemed to like my accent. That was the main like feature that people remembered me for was the accent. Right. Actually, yeah. Not my personality or the fact that I do look at work for them. The fact that I <laughs> have a British accent. I have an accent. That you're from a different place. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it does give you that. yeah, to be fair I did do the same thing to everyone else I met. They were all going, Oh your British accent's amazing and I was going, Oh your American accents are amazing. I think oh. they like my American accent. No, your one's Fine. I don't remember ever saying it was bad. <laughs> I don't either, actually. You just made it up then. No. Okay. Yes. I just wanted yeah. to join the conversation. I felt left out and alone. Ah. I'll just sit here with my iPod. Uh, Miss Metzger, uh, what you said that you uh, you work in Vancouver. Yes. Yeah. Were you born in Vancouver, or did you uh, move there in North Vancouver? What's that? Place? I am from Edmonton. Um, Ooh. Is a little more further north in the province of Alberta, um, and I moved here to go to acting school. Yeah. Uh, it, I thought you said Acme, like you know Acme anvils and all that stuff. But anyways. Oh, Acme school, yes. Yes. I, we make the school Acme, of everything. Acme no, products. acting. Sorry, I need to articulate. <laughs> uh, it's fine. It's all just a little bit on the weird side. Mm -hmm. You say it like it's I'm not sorry. all the time. It's like that. I'm mm. sorry, I'm Californian. And that happens. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, but is uh, is Vancouver generally considered to be kind of a, an a uh, accurate city in the same way that uh, Los Angeles in the United States is considered something of a you know mecca for actors? Yeah, um, I think uh, Vancouver and Toronto are the main centers for uh, the entertainment industry in Canada. We get a lot of American productions that come up here. Um, we're cheap. We're like the Chinese sweatshop of the entertainment industry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you poor Canadians. Yeah. Like, what, what we're selling, we're selling because it's cheap. And yeah, I got it. maple syrup, trees, snow, and acting. Yeah. Sure, I, I, I'd argue with that assessment, except that I continually use cheap... Uh, you know, Canadian voice actors and voice actors on my projects. So, yeah, exactly. and you're not, and you're not even paying us. That's how cheap we are. I know it's crazy. <laughs> Why am I doing work for you now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, just you heard it here for uh, first, folks. If you live in Canada or intend to move to Canada, and you want to become a voice actor or, or actress. Kelly Metzgar is totally telling you that Vancouver and Toronto are the places to go where you will automatically find work and be successful. Automatically. You don't even need to try. You just got to go and just get off with your airplane and go to the first store. Just start talking see. in the middle of the street. They'll pick you up. Yeah. Mm. Be like, you, you, you talk every day, don't you? I'll yes. You yes, I do. Cartoons for everyone. All of the cartoons. I like the idea that you can just walk into the border of the area and they'll instantly as soon as you cross over into the border they'll say right you you're a voice actor now yeah <laughs> it's that instantaneous it's it's, it's so easy <laughs> and canada sounds like the greatest place on earth everyone should move to canada it's definitely hey. better than england 
The weather is bad and so is the economy. That's my slogan. <laughs> I think that's everywhere country. in the world except for... No way, everywhere in the world is bad weather and bad economy. Yeah, but it's worse in England because we moan about it as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's hot and humid right where I am, so I don't British like it. stereotypes. British stereotypes. I, I pity the poor person who started up this podcast. You know, they'd have a wonderful time enjoying a you know break from you know whatever miserable things are happening in their lives, and they decide, yeah, we'll listen to some you know funny people talk on the YouTubes. I'm about, just trying to be uh, topical. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of topical, should we go back to ponies? Yeah. Hey, does it always you want to keep like rambling on? That. But rambling's fun. Yeah. It so be- much fun. Mm-hmm. Oh lord. Uh, if you were uh, okay, obviously, you know, without spoiling anything, without mentioning anything that might or might not be happening in future. Don't risk yeah. it. Imagine for a moment that you have no idea anything that like. Season four's voice acting work would actually not begin until the uh, until the you know season started airing. That, that's all off in the future. Okay. Given the choice, would you like to have like a bigger character or role in season four? Of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd love it if Spitfire had more to do. But I understand she what her role, like the Wonderbolts' role, is in the show. They're this something that Rainbow Dash holds up in esteem as something to aspire to, mm-hmm. something that's outside of the main six, right? Right. Yeah. Oh. See, what we need is like a Wonderbolt spinoff series just about yeah. them, like Wonderbolt days, and then it's just like... No, it's funny you should, it's it's funny you should say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what the whole first ten minutes without you we, we were talking about. We'd flesh we out all the details. Curse you, gas station! It, it's a shame, really. If you were here, you could have gotten part. We were mm. just hanging out uh, part of the Did you make up a tune in Metalizy, too? Oh, no, we didn't. Maybe uh, we should. Uh, so well, we'll, probably should. we'll get right on that after the <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll be airing this on this very uh, on this very channel. Uh, you know, yeah. the wonderful show. The Wonder Years. The, the Wonder Year. Years. Oh, crap. There you go. The Wonder Years. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Really, I, really, I can see this idea taking off, though I don't think it's allowed, but, you know. I don't think it's allowed. Well, if it's fan made uh, and it's non profit. Uh, okay, I'll get the editing software out. <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't even written the first episode. Uh, so much work. So much work. <laughs> Not really. We can make stuff up right now. But anyways, back to topics and ponies and. If you uh, yeah, actually, just as a quick uh, question, if uh, you know, given a choice, uh, mm-hmm. on any show in the universe, apart from ponies, that you are not currently working on, uh, what show would you like to to be on? Like if you were if you were just uh, given whatever role you wanted and whatever, it doesn't have to be a show that's out right now. It could be just your dream show. Like what would that? Be? Hmm. A cartoon? Cartoon, ideally. You can also do a lot of action if you prefer. Um, or a puppet show. That requires uh, music. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would have to say I would want to be on Game of Thrones. That That's my favorite show right now. <laughs> I, I absolutely cannot blame you for that. I, I would want. I want to be the Red Witch. Isn't that what she's called, the Red Witch? Yeah. Well, that's what uh, that's what um, Davros is calling her. So yeah. that's, that's enough. Yeah, I want to. I've I want never to... seen it. Have you ever seen it? No, no, I haven't. Actually. Everyone talks about it and says you should watch it, but then I can't find it anywhere, and I can't afford Netflix. Yeah, I'm so poor. That we live on the sides of a country slash the Atlantic Ocean. I would lend you my DVD because it is. It's wonderful. And now I'm going to imagine, you know, uh, your voice uh, on over the Red Witch every time I see her. And it's going to be really weird. Oh, it's going to be, that... going to be brilliant. <laughs> she might not be as scary. She might not be as scary. She's yeah. happy and chipper now. He hands out cookies and cupcakes and ice cream all throughout May. Yeah. Poison. Full of poison. <laughs> yes. See, it so doesn't make... <laughs> have to feed them to the fire. It doesn't make her any Did less you like awesome. A cupcake? Oh yes, please. I love cupcakes. You're the one true king. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, that's that. You know what? I I'm I'm just gonna you know if I had any sort of pull, I would actually totally go to HBO and say, this lady here, great Red Witch. 
him. You will, you would love this. Going yeah, to... fire, fire that other lady. <laughs> fire. Uh, she, she, she sucks. She wasn't on pony. Yeah, like whatever. They gave her her bring on, bring on Kathleen. Yeah, uh, Medgar. Yeah, just just use the argument that you know. Just say, have you ever heard of bronies? We're a powerful fan base. Powerful. We have an army. A disconcerting <laughs> powerful fan base. Right now, it's like, my God, our show could actually have watchers. <laughs> yeah, all because of bronies. It's so unpopular yeah. right now, but the bronies, they could do it. They could. The unnervingly really? powerful fan base that could. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Nike, do it. But um, actually, out of curiosity, have you ever been interested in ever doing anything for Disney if you ever could get the chance? That's just out of curiosity. Oh, yeah. I'd love to do a Disney movie. I'd love to do one where I'd ha- I had like a big musical number. Really? Oh, Disney has really? lovely musical numbers. Yes. Do you, uh, do you sing? Yes. Everyone sings too hard. It's just a matter I, of how I well. Would, I would like to do like <laughs> True. Spitfire singing. That would be, that'd be interesting. What would she sing about? What would Spitfire sing about if she had a song? Oh, Spitfire would probably sing about... We are men, you must be swift as a coursing river. You I think there's copyright placed on oh. that. <laughs> 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 well, well, just change up the lyrics a little bit like everyone else does in the world. And then right. just make it like ponified. Yeah. Yeah. I that work, but, uh, see, I know exactly what Spitfire would sing about. Oh, what? really? She's thinking about how she should have been a doctor. Oh, yeah. Time. Oh, yes. She, she's thinking about her anguish over her life choices. And she was <laughs> flying, flying, and then she'd realize that she was, but no, this is where she's supposed to be. This is where she felt free and like herself. Mm-hmm. And then she'd do a flip in, in the air. So she'd she do a flip in the air. The she's ran, like, just walking, singing, flip in the air, back to walking and singing sort of thing. Oh, yeah. Talking. We need Sounds to like a... choreograph this. We're doing it anyway, but we need to I'm do just this imagining, more. actually, right now, like, you know, Spitfire walking along, she's, she's walking through the, the doctor district. I will find my just, way. Like, hospital yeah. Side. Uh, all these happy doctors kind of, like, dancing out of the sides of windows as they're smiling patients. I saved a man's life! Oh, good job, George! Sort and, of thing. Yeah, like, she's <laughs> dancing along and singing about how she would have been a doctor, and then she takes up in the air, and it's... The song turns to how it's about freedom, though, and she's she's free. Yeah. We uh we need to get someone to animate this. Exactly. Oh. We also need someone to write the music. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You do cinematography, so you can do that. Um, I know I don't I know a couple of animators. Well, that'll do. Okay, we got two get Jack, animators. Get someone way Jan out of our league. He's expensive. <laughs> yes. He's like seventy-five dollars a second. Jeez. Wow. wow. That's actually, that's actually, actually, and I think about it, that's considerably cheap for professional kind of animation. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends on it's hand drawn. It's hand drawn, and yeah, like each frame is going to. I wouldn't know yes. because I don't tend to hire. I can make storyboards. I think this is all going a little bit further than we probably should let it. So, yeah. back to ponies. It's going to be don't let it happen. It can't happen. <laughs> it's the impossible dream. Uh, all this stuff is now going to appear all over the internet of this, like, Spitfire fan fiction, you know, oh, where she God. wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> yeah. I- I'm going to keep a lookout for those fan fictions now. And actually, uh, going off of that, uh, when when we were, uh, or when the, they had Everfree Northwest, I-, I believe it was at Everfree Northwest, Andrea Libman said that she did something that she I think she called Fluttershy Fridays, where she would actually go onto the internet and just look at all the different kinds of like art and just different stuff that the Bronies come up with because there's some really good content that 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 comes out. Um, have you ever gone online and just looked at what the uh, at, at things for like Spitfire? Um, I have I have seen some uh, when I was um, deciding Very what nice. to design for the the conventions. I held a little fan art contest. So oh. people sent me some, and people send me links to different stuff on my Twitter account. Um, at the beginning, I found the Tumblr Spitfire is sexy, and so that uh, scared me a little bit. Run uh, away! And and Burn so, the fire. and so then I stopped seeking out Spitfire um, fan art because I'm I'm kind of scared of what I'll find. 
but yeah. the ones that get sent to me are are, are pretty awesome. Awesome. Mm. I was gonna say if my I could... Twitter is my Twitter handle is uh, at Angelhead Hipster. If anyone wants to follow me, and if they have fan art that they would like to share, I'm happy to take a look at it. Yeah. I will link that in the description. Yeah, that will be linked in the description. Why is everyone going to say that? I wanted to say that. <laughs> I was going to say like, we're fast enough, they are. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was and sent non-creepy, wonderful yeah. to uh, yeah. You know, I, was because gonna... I do tend to find that a good rule of thumb, if I may suggest it, is don't ever look on the internet for things. Just don't use the internet ever again. Just don't use the it... internet. Just go outside. It's a lovely day. Go outside. Yeah. Enjoy you, sunshine. You do What's tend sunshine? to find things that you don't want to find. Yes, this it's podcast true. has an age rating. Yes, I won't mention anything any further. But yeah, it gets yeah. weird. Yeah. It's possible to avoid weird. Just, yeah, you kind of have to. It's sort of a trial and error thing where you slowly discover how to. Yeah, recognize and avoid the fair signs, the fair signs of creepiness. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, that requires accidentally stumbling upon and quite a few creepy, creepy things. So it's generally best not to risk it. Yeah, I it's... don't blame anyone who decides to go. Nope, not gonna try. Yeah. Like and also, then, 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 my mom was scared for me when I was going to when I was said I was going to one of these conventions because. <laughs> Because of the scary things on the internet. But once I got to know who bronies were and what was involved in the community, I knew it was going to be great. Mm. But it, like, it's unfortunate that that's the impression that it leaves. Yeah. Um, the first yeah, impression it, that it leaves, you know? It tends yeah. to sound out more than most other things. Like, it's always yeah. the negative things in the fan base that are more noticed than the better yeah. things. Yeah. Absolutely. Something that sort of happens with just about any, you know, sizable group of people who are mm -hmm. a little bit outside of the norm. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, for, for the longest time before uh, they became, you know, massive uh, box office, you know, hits, uh, you know, comic books and comic book fans always kind of had a reputation of being kind of big chubby dudes with, you know, no social skills. And, right. You know, I can really, assure you that we're definitely not like that. Yeah, and I, I'd, I'd like I, to I, think. I, I, I don't really... <laughs> follow comics all much, but I do occasionally go into a, my local comic book shop, and most of the people there are, you know, very, very nice, pleasant, social people. Mm. I mean, but, you know, we, we kind of get a lot of, you know, a lot of people have really weird impressions of people. Because yeah. Mm. So every group has their immature, creepy people, but there's the immature, and then there's normal people, but th there's more of those people. Than I the think we fit people. into the immature bracket in some cases. Yes, yeah, we do. Though we're I hate immature, to admit but we're not immature creepy. Um, oh, not creepy immature. I was going to say, actually, uh, just going off of what you mentioned, I did kind of wonder about the whole going to a convention thing, especially after your first impression not being the best one it could have been. I would have, personally, if I were in that sort of position, I'd find it a tad intimidating to go to a convention like that. I was just wondering if you haven't answered already what sort of impression you got when you were there, whether it was kind of... Oh, what, kind of what kind of impression did the bronies leave once I was there? Yeah. Um, uh, were you kind of worried about what you might find sort of thing? or? Um, not really, no. And, and I went with like a whole group of uh, voice actors from Vancouver, so um, that was fun and helpful because they all re they told me what to expect and um, yeah. we had a lot of fun right away. I, I, I've been to the Burning Man Festival uh, a few times and that's all full of freaks and weirdos in costumes. <laughs> so yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable in, in those settings. I, I like to keep the freaks and weirdos close. <laughs> Uh, to be fair, I'd Good. probably be much more comfortable going to uh, a burning convention than Burning Man. Mm. Oh, well, <laughs> yes. It's, uh, yes. Uh, uh, mm, a Brony convention seems like it would be like 1% of, of what, what Burning be. Man would be. But in, in terms of like costumes and the, the rave and uh, the socializing and meeting, like building a community, it's, it's very similar. Yeah. I can imagine, and trust me, it's it's really not just on the uh, you know voice actress, voice actress side things that uh, there's a bit of intimidation. 
I went to the uh, the BronyCon uh, convention this year, which was a very, very large convention. I can tell you, I was just as nervous about going there as just a fan as you were as a voice actress because yeah. it's yeah, you know, they're, they're they're still reputation even with people who are actually, you know, part of the fandom. It's still you know that that idea that they're that you're gonna run into something really bizarre and kind of creepy is always at the back of your mind. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, but it, it's not. It's it's actually quite nice. Yeah. Yeah. I had a good time. It was nice to chat with everybody and get to know people and. And discover what this phenomena actually is firsthand. Because when I tell people about bronies, um, they're pretty interested in it. It seems some like something that's crazy. They like they can't. They just can't believe it. Uh, but it's not really that that crazy. It's just a show that people have identified with and are building a community around. Yeah. yeah to me, only... from what I, my perspective. If it's... only it were that easy to tell everyone that. It yeah. does seem like there's two ends to the extreme. There's people who are neutral about it, and obviously there's people in between, but then you've got people who are very positive, overly, members of the community. And then you've got people who are very negative towards it. And, yeah. 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 Which I, one of the first experiences I actually had with the fandom before getting into it was uh, pictures of that people had done that we're of a nature that I can't really describe on this podcast. I was going to say, do I want to hear about this? No, well, okay, it's not, it's not like that type of thing, but like violent images depicting oh. people basically going like, you know, oh end this, you know, end this horrible thing before it, you know, gets any further, you know, down with ponies or catch on the internet. Whoa. Uh, so, yeah, like, the thing is, there are definitely people on the other extreme that can be fairly disturbing. I don't understand why everyone can't just live and let live, but, you know. Because they're not you, Rabbit. I know. <laughs> Everyone wishes they were you, though. I'm sh not entirely sure that's accurate, but okay. Well, it's, it's like partially accurate. I would say the majority of the people on the planet don't actually know who I am, but that's... <laughs> They've never really even heard of you. Yeah. Yeah. At any rate, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show, Kelly, but I think you said that you had to go somewhere... I, I have ten minutes. Okay, you have ten minutes. All right, let's uh, yeah. let's make the most of that. Cherish the time you have, Duhad, Asa. Okay, let's play I Spy with those ten minutes then. No, no I Spy. That, that's no. the worst possible use of the time, I think. <laughs> you can play I Spy yeah, at any I, other time. No, I have one question. Uh, uh, just for generally voice actors that I, I've always wanted uh, answered. When you um, after you do these lines and, and, you know, it actually finally comes out, the episode that you are in finally comes out, do you watch the episodes that you're in, or do you find that weird to see your voice coming out of this character? Oh, I, I yeah, I watch, if I can get a hold of it, um, I will watch the shows that I'm in. Um, and then I just analyze it and like, oh, I could have done that better. Oh, that line. Oh, oh, I see what they were trying to get me to do. I don't know if I quite did that. I just analyze everything that uh, I that I do. Yeah. Um, I know what that's like. And also, when I watch cartoons now, I, I can tell whether they're recorded in Vancouver. Well, usually I'll know which ones are really? recorded. And then and I, I can hear um, people that I know. I can hear their voices. And so then I just picture the real people instead of the actual cartoons. Like, when I watch cartoons, I... I break it down, and it's really hard for me to oh, watch yeah. it as a show. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I do that on occasion too. When I'm watching cartoons, I try to picture the voice actor behind the mic, just saying these weird, abstract lines that mean nothing sometimes. Yeah, super funny. Mm -hmm. I, 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 have a, I have a question. As someone who's actually done a little bit of uh, <clears throat> far, far less professional voice work uh, in the past, uh, oh, yes. it seems like everyone who I talk to, uh, myself included. Who Jimmy? does any sort of voice acting on any level, professional and so on? The uh, response I always get to, uh, you know, do you like when you listen to your own work? How do you enjoy your own voice? The oh, answer I, I always I, get I, is, oh God, I hate listening to my own voice. It, it's so it's so bad. I always feel really bad when I listen to my own voice. Do, do you ever get that? Or? Um, I no, I don't. I don't hate my own voice. Uh, I I uh, always. Uh, I took a lot of singing lessons growing up, uh, and I was told I had a unique voice, and I 
remember thinking as a teenager, if there's anything that's going to give me an advantage, um, it's my voice. And so I knew that that was one of the strong uh, features that, that I was trying to sell as an actor or market myself with. Um, I, I would like to have a wider range of a voice. Um, I would like to be able to do uh, low and sexy characters, and I'd like to be able to hit those high uh, notes that Andrea Lippman can hit when she plays Pinkie Pie. She's, <laughs> oh, yeah. She hit those, those frequencies so easily. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm comfortable listening to my own voice. And uh, I find the concept of uh, a voice print really interesting that mm -hmm. that your voice holds an image and when you hear a voice you picture what that person looks like regardless of what the person actually looks like when you separate you, um mm -hmm. the voice from the person mm -hmm. you know um so I, i'm into voices i'm very into voices yeah. <laughs> it's it's like um i i voice print is really cool actually that's why i do like your voice because you have such a voice that's only recognizable by just you it's your it's your voice basically like whereas everyone else you know they can do mimics and other people's voices they have a wider range but still i i do like voice print better it's like with um vincent price he has such a voice print yeah um yeah because if he's in something you know it's him just because you yeah. recognize yeah. it it's just so discernible from all the other voices yeah yeah that would be awesome to be able to uh, be so wide, like your voice so recognized like that. Like yeah. or mm. Morgan Freeman and, and mm -hmm. Joel Jones and those. He's pretty recognizable uh, too, actually. Yeah, he has a very, he has a great voice. Uh, mm -hmm. There are those people who have, uh, you know, who do so much work that, and have such a distinctive uh, type of voice. And you, you just, you know, it's right there. Like even, even if you haven't heard them in a really long time, Christopher yeah. Walken. Christopher yeah, Walken, exactly. yeah. It's not always about being able to do a multitude of hundreds of voices. It's about having a voice that just stands out and people want to hear it. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. So the Tabitha can do so many different characters. I'm very envious. I I hope that it, uh, <laughs> I will one day be as good as her. She can. Yeah, she's got a huge range. She, she's an extremely talented voice actress. Uh, yeah. yeah, her range is incredible. But hey, you know, it's only to aspire to. It isn't it. One day, mm. one day I'll be like Tabitha. One day I will be a doctor. Listening? Are you listening to me? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you've already made a, quite the impression already. So you're, you know, just give it a little bit of time. I'm well mm. on the way to world domination. Yes, <laughs> and we shall support you behind the way and your goal is to become a doctor, Spitfire. <laughs> Thank you. That's right, everyone. Support Kathleen Metzgar and support Dr. Spitfire. Mm. Yeah. And if worst comes to worst, at least your voice isn't as monotone as mine can be most of the time. <laughs> it's slightly well, it's less actually, today. Oh. Again, with voice print, though, I, I like your voice lightning. I love the way it just sounds. I don't know why. It's got, it's like, it's so monotone, but appealing at the same time. I don't, it's mm. more like droll. I yeah, it's like, more like yeah. droll. Actually, you're right. I don't mind my voice. I don't tend to do any actual voice acting. That's not really my... I do narration. Well, you voice Twilight. Uh, I, like I know, stuff. but that's not serious. Oh, you, you voice Twilight in some fan dubs? That would be funny. Uh, yeah, uh, it's not uh, not no, as serious uh, as we make it. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll explain. So what it is, I got bored one day, and my friends and I were on a Skype call. I'm like, hey... Let's take My Little Pony transcript from an episode and just read it as the characters. And we've been doing that, just adding random voices as characters. I mean, Russian Dad, I mean, Rainbow Dash is Russian in our series. So, oh, so. that's funny. Yeah, yeah but all the, it's just random. Obviously, the whole thing is incredibly silly. Yeah. So we you just sort of. I yeah, can't they professionally do Twilight's voice. But yeah. yeah. Not real, not real stuff, and obviously Hasbro, we're not doing anything that's making any sort of money or taking any <laughs> away from the show. This is a, a disclaimer to any Hasbro representative watching. Please don't sue us or cease and desist us. We have done nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> or fail the corporate overlords. What was that too hard? Just saying, you know, silly things with friends, nothing else. You don't need to send your lawyers after us. <laughs> oh, yes, it's very true. I think Kelly should join us for one of those readings. I no. think that's probably breaking something. It probably is breaking <laughs> something. You're right. Something. I mean, she can voice any character she wants, too. You, sh you could be Discord. <laughs> uh, oh, I, w oh, I wish I was in the episode of Discord. I love that actor. 
that plays. Oh, yeah, uh, John Delancey, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would it be uh, bad I, to say I, I hadn't heard of him beforehand? I didn't realize that he did Star Trek, and that was you, his role. Oh, oh, you didn't know? Um, you didn't watch Next Generation? I'm young in comparison to everyone <laughs> else here, and also yeah, sure. it doesn't air in this country because. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't air in this country. In we, we've got a useless television service, even though yeah. it's actually not that England bad. England only airs English shows. Yeah. Oh. I don't know what Abe you're talking about. I know John Lampley primarily from his, uh, his you know, pivotal role in three episodes of Breaking Bad. Clearly oh, his yeah. most famous. Oh, yeah, he was in Breaking Bad, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was the, uh, he was the father of... Jeffrey. Yeah. Mm. Actually, I, I did like him in that. He was that. You know, really kind of out of character for his, his usual role. Yeah. Like that. Mm. yeah. That's the actors you know, getting a chance to break out of their uh, podcasts. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, uh, actually, for, for a little bit, for one question here, um, <laughs> going off of uh, you know other actors and things like that, if besides the ones that are on my little pony, if there's a voice actor or even a live action actor that you would uh, like to work with, um, who would it be? Morgan Freeman. Oh, who is my who is my favorite actor? Oh, what's her yeah. name? Um, uh, here I'm looking her up right now. Um, oh, good old what's her name? Good old what's her name? I <laughs> love her. It, when she did that one scene in that one show, oh my gosh! Oh, yeah, <laughs> just, just to talented. die for. Patricia Clarkson. Patricia oh, Clarkson. okay. I don't know. If, uh, I don't know if you know who she is. But... I, I recognize her name. I, I'm pretty sure as soon as you say something, she's in. I recognize her. So. She was in. Uh, um, I just watched a movie. She's in uh, Vicky Cristina Barcelona. She had a, lot, a big part oh, okay. on Six Feet Under. Yeah. Okay. Um, she kind of has. Uh, she's an older woman with uh, strawberry blonde hair. The movie that I thought she was amazing in was a movie called Cairo Time. No, oh, I've heard of that. It w I haven't seen it yet though. Oh. Uh, I'm a, okay. What kind of a film student am I? <laughs> I know. Not what you know what any of Chris Clarkson is? You haven't seen Cairo Time? Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Oh. I'm sorry. Anyway, I love her. I, I want to be her. I don't just want to work with her. I just want to be her. I just want to be her. <laughs> yeah, and, well. And on that note, no. <laughs> well, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll see what we can do in terms of uh, you know stealing her place and getting her all, all of her movies. I okay. love that it's like you make it sound like we're actually influential. Like, yeah, we'll see what we can do. We'll see <laughs> what we can do about that. We have, we have no sway in the industry at all. Of course. No, no, no. Alex, Alex please. I'm an American. I, I therefore have contacts with the CIA. Oh, come on. You're, you're from course. Maine. The FBI, the FBI doesn't even want to deal with Maine. <laughs> you have a real problem with Maine. Not really. I just like making fun of Maine. You just stop. <laughs> Maine. <laughs> Always bashing you Maine, know. honestly. Hamill uh, Hamlin, the vice president under Lincoln during the Civil War, was from Maine. Hmm? Not California, Maine. No, oh, okay, that's nice. Yeah. You know Ronald Reagan from Patton, California? In a lot of our more recent podcasts, they tend to dissolve into a Maine versus California debate. Oh really? I don't. I don't know why. I just like making fun of it. Then he banters back. So <laughs> the only option I have left is to banter back at him. And I'm ah. sat here wondering why Americans from Maine and California are so strange. Well, I mean, they're in the country. Well, I mean, we could go back to making fun of France. No, we are not going <laughs> back to making fun of France. France is pretty Any of our uh, French viewers, please note that it is AR's views alone, and he does not represent the whole podcast. Actually, it's my YouTube channel. Anyways. That's what, okay, yeah. <laughs> Any. At any rate, I, I do apologize. I do kind of get random on occasion. If we can and... pull it back from the brink of insanity for just a little longer. Well, I was just doing that, and it's sort of... I don't even know what kind of voice this is. I'm not even sure. You want to kind of get into that whenever you're asking a question. It's fake. I, I do, actually. I don't know why. I mean, I could just, like, do some other random voice. No, that's... Probably better to stick with that one. Alright, I'll just start talking oh, about this no. the whole time. That's so apparently, this has dissolved into a voice reel <laughs> for AR. Um, no. Clearly, even when we have wonderful professional voice actresses on the show, yeah. it's still I just going like to make funny. <laughs> I like making funny sounds. Don't we all? It's very true. It's true. As a voice actor, you have to, you have, you, you, you have to be, uh, you know, 
Like, yeah, making funny sounds is what you do. That's, 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 it's that's true. What it is. It's, it's, means. Literally, it's literally what I do. All, all day long? Just make funny all sounds? All day long. Just, oh, okay. Well, it, it, I do do it all day long, actually, but I don't always get paid to do it. Hmm. It's more yeah. fun when you don't get paid sometimes because you're not like under pressure and they'd be expected of this. You just, yeah. I'd like to uh, make a point there, AR. I'm not paid what? to do the things that I do. It's still very well, stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I blamed you hard. How do you blame me? He's an, I don't know. He's, he's my a, he's a, um, is all of, my thing to all of you is all of the wonderful people I bring onto the show for you to talk to. <laughs> yes. You enjoy talking to Greg Hoffman, didn't you? <laughs> Who? Simple him. <laughs> oh, him, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, I didn't recognize him by his name. I'm like, who's that? You'll have that's to use what I get. Names. Not... This is a, um... I pay so much attention to who we interview on this show. This is a kind of symptom of being on the internet. You tend to use people's names they use on the internet as opposed to their uh, real names, so you don't recognize true. them. Um, also, <laughs> aren't we running out of time? Mm-hmm. I think... My yes. word, look at my wrist. My word, look at my wrist. It's gorgeous. No. Um, <laughs> uh, this has all gone so horribly wrong. <laughs> it, it, went, it went fine. It went fine. I had a lovely time. In all you honesty, really I think this went better than some of our other episodes. Yeah, <laughs> probably. We, don't say that. Don't say that. Say that this is like crazy that like this wonderful interview has actually been like the worst it gets. Yeah. It's, no, this isn't the worst it gets. Please, we made fun of France for thirty minutes in one episode once. <laughs> That's uh, we're going to refer to that as the dark period or the incident. We're not going to talk. That was about like that six episode. episodes ago. <laughs> boys, boys, I, uh, have, I have to leave you. Oh That's no! Fine. All right, this is that time. Yeah, uh, Kevin McCarg. Thank you so much for coming on the show. For those of you it's who, are, yeah, everybody, watch her other shows. Or yeah, else? Chicago and um, Star Wars Lego Chronicles or yeah. Yoda Chronicles or whatever it's called. Check yes. out the Yoda Chronicles. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So that's what awesome. it. You know. We do apologize for being buffooned as well. Oh, no, well, buffoonery. Uh, I'm very, I'm very comfortable with buffoonery. Oh, okay. oh good. Phew. This, this is all fun and games and well. It is. You'll find yes. a lot of that buffoonery here. Yes. Make sure to like, well, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Never said that before. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. All right. Have a wonderful day, and the rest of you, thank you for listening, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye.